Nightingale is massive and there is so much to do, it can quickly become overwhelming as the game doesn't really hold your hand when it comes down to getting familiar with the essentials. I've spent over 70 hours exploring this epic new open world survival game, while my first 10 to 20 were, well, chaotic to say the least. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel, my name is Foriam and in today's ultimate beginner guide I'm going to share everything you want to know to get familiar with Nightingale. These are the 20 most important things I wish I knew sooner. From essential beginner tips to advanced tricks to not just survive but thrive in the magical world of the Fey. One video with all the answers to your questions for your early day adventures, so let's jump right into it. Before we get started, I want to say a quick thanks to Inflection Games for making this video possible. It's an honor to share content about a game which I'm very much looking forward to covering on the channel because man, there is so much to talk about. Be sure to check out Nine and Gale with my link in the description down below and of course share your thoughts about it in the comment section. I'm very much looking forward to hear what you think about Nine and Gale, but let's get straight down to business. One of, if not the most important thing you want to know more about in Nightingale is the realm walking, as this unique mechanic allows you to travel to any type of world you want to visit next, which can be done at a portal either crafted yourself or found in the world when you interact with the realm card machine. This is where you throw in two different cards. The first one is your biome card, which determines the biome of the realm you're gonna spawn in next. As of today, we have desert cards, forest cards, and swamp cards. Three different biomes to choose from, while towards the future, without doubt, we will have access to more biomes. Once you've chosen the biome you want to explore, we also have major cards, which determine the difficulty and points of interest you can come across during your adventures. If we play an anti-carrying card, with level 20, it will seek a realm of middling danger, in which you can come across the Druid faction and Fey ruins. While later game we will unlock more cards like the Provisioner card, which will make everything slightly more dangerous, but all these also unlock newer blueprints to make your character even more powerful. So your quest is to explore all the different realm combinations possible, avail all the secrets Nightingale has in store for you. The major card you play already sets the base difficulty for the realm, while in the bottom left we can also change this one. Say if we choose easy, it will tone this down a little bit, make it 13 instead of 30, so while if you go to hard or maybe even extreme, all the mobs will be more powerful. Both their HP and damage will be scaled up, so if you're ready for a real challenge, why not try out extreme with a higher difficulty card, which can be explored with friends if you tick on the public realm realm, then others will be able to enter your world. Very important, it is also possible to reset the realm which you already have active with your portal. If you reopen it, you will lose the cards and we will spawn in the same world which you found earlier, but if you reset the realm, you will find something entirely different. And yes, I think it goes without saying that before you open up a portal, you want to be ready for battle, because you will have to fight a couple bad guys before you can travel to another realm. Anyways, here we are. If we open up the map, we can see that we just arrived at an astrolable forest realm with an SS trader in the south as well as in the northeast. So if you're not happy with this configuration, what you can do is just get back into the portal, travel to your main realm, reset the portal and spawn in a new world. It's important though that your main base should always be at an abeyance realm as these allow the construction of an estate. If I open up the map, this is where I have my respite located. Something which I can always quick travel to with the travel to respite button right here, which always brings me back to my base. Inflection Games was so kind to send me a couple of these realm cards. I think they all look pretty epic. I always have the Abeyance and Force card in the back, by the way. Anyways, what I think is very important to do is have your respite as central on the map as possible. Close to portals, all sorts of points of interest, so it's going to be easy to use the Realmic Transmuter, travel to different realms, or deal with sites of power without having to always walk for ages. It's essential during your adventures, you always pick up 
kept a couple of rocks and stone blocks. Trust me, guys, this little tip is going to save you an immense amount of time and also prevent plenty of frustrations. What you want to do is always have enough resources for an estate cairn, as you can basically place these anywhere in the world. It's even possible to place these right next to boss fights. If you then interact with it, it allows you to put your new home base or spawn point in the world, which, if you want, can always be deconstructed afterwards if you no longer wish to keep it. But especially if you strategically place this one right in front of a dungeon entrance or a site of power very close to a boss fight, if you do happen to die during the encounter, you can spawn only meters away from it and quickly retrieve your belongings, continue the fight and claim victory. Once you're done with your adventure, it's very important to remove that respite and reassign your home base respite to the main one, as you can only have one in your world, which again is why I think you want to have this one as central to the world as possible, as you're going to be using this quick travel from the menu many times during your adventures. Next up, we have snacks for survival. Essentials you want to have with you at all times to make survival so much easier in Nightingale. So if we interact with the campfire and let's say go for a roasted meat, we're going to throw in this tier 2 buck meat, which gives us a maximum HP of 36, stamina of 16. But this actually changes depending on the type of food you throw in there. For example, this high quality fabled meat actually comes with much better stats. Same counts for these mixed plants. If we throw in something different, the final result can be entirely different. Anyway, it's very important you always have a nice amount of healing salves with you because these are your primary means of patching yourself up during your adventures when you get injured. As you can see right now, I have 498 HP. 95 even because we just lost all our food bonuses. If we now switch to our food which we made earlier, check it out. We can crank this up a little bit more, even increases our stamina. Let's eat two more types of food right here to further increase the bonuses on our character. But now let's also jump off a cliff for showcase purposes. And yep, this hurts as you can see. Now we have a sprained ankle so we can no longer dodge. Sprinting is going to be less efficient as well. So in that case, you always want to have some healing salve at your disposal, which can easily get rid of this injury so we can continue traveling in the most efficient ways possible. Speaking of travel, you can do this so much more efficiently if you have both the hunting knife and umbrella equipped at the same time. If you jump and right click with the knife equipped, you will perform a dash ability, which does cost a little bit of stamina, but it allows you to cover great distances. In this little speed test performed in the desert, you can see that with the hunting knife, we are so much faster compared to the regular sprinting without any tools equipped. So in the beginning of this video, we already covered realm walking, which is very important to explore all the treasures Nightingale has in store for us. And in this case, especially the essence traders are essential for leveling up your base and gearing up your character. As in every unique realm configuration, you can come across different SS traders, which give you access to a wide range of exclusive new blueprints, which you can purchase to unlock not only new augmentations to unlock more blueprints in your base, but also new decorations for it, better equipment to gather more powerful resources and so much more. If we quickly check out the guidebook and go to the traders tab, this is where you will find all the different realm combinations possible in Nightingale. The Abeyance Realm is the first one you will come across with already some simple items, realm cards and refinement stations. While the more you explore, the more unique the weapons and upgrades become. Like new cards you can play at a Realmic Transmuter, which we're going to get to in a second, but also more augmentations for your base, which unlock many more upgrades. What I absolutely love about Nightingale are the minor realm cards. These are an absolute game changer when it comes down to making your world entirely different every single time depending on the situation you want to create. The artisan card right here, for example, improves the durability of crafted items and have crafting stations always augmented by the ideal environment regardless of placement. Say we play a Maleficent card, it will plunge the realm into eternal night and increase the yield of bounce resources. The Opposion version also deals damage to my character, so it's not very recommended, while this can also be cleansed when playing a cleansing card, which removes all the minor card effects from a realm. 
But yeah, if you're tired of a certain realm card's effect, you can always play another one. So let's first travel back to the regular world and now play a Thint Veil card. Drastically reduces gravity, so we always have this slow fall, which allows us to travel much further safer. If we combine this with a quick travel method talked about earlier. As you can see, now we can jump high in the sky, dash forward, make realm exploration so much easier. My absolute favorite minor realm card is the Duelist card, because this one allows you to hit like a truck. Of course, as trade-off, you will also receive a lot more damage, so you can literally get one shot. If you master the art of dodging your enemies, well, this one is going to become extremely rewarding, as it allows you to snowball your way through dungeons, make boss fights a lot easier, while, yeah, if you fail to dodge them, it can also be fatal. So this is why you definitely want to use the respawn technique talked about earlier in this video. During your adventures, you've probably already noticed that you're completing challenges every now and then by dealing with an X amount of bad guys or achieving certain goals. Well, all the challenges are basically rewarded, something I only came across after dozens of hours of playtime, which is pretty well hidden in your guidebook. So if we check out the challenges tab right here, you can find all sorts of challenges with also their rewards. So you definitely want to check out all the different challenges you can come across during your adventures, as if you've completed them, claim the rewards right here. From regular essence dust to different types of potions, this menu is filled with challenges and their rewards. So don't forget to check out this menu from time to time to get your hands on some bonus loot. One of the things I enjoy doing the most in Nightingale is the hunting, because it is next level. Compared to other survival games, there is so much more to it, as not only can you headshot enemies for already a nice amount of bonus damage, but there is also something like hard shots. This instantly reminded me of the hunter Call of the Wild, which I clocked many hours on, but when executed well with either a sling bow or a rifle, you will most likely take out wildlife with only one hit which is quite satisfying to execute, especially in the desert against bigger foes like elephants. Take them out with only one bullet, reap the rewards afterwards, which is not only going to make your hunting game a lot easier, but you will also save a lot of ammo during the process. There are some heartless enemies in Nightingale as well, so not every single one of them can be taken down with one shot, but even more interesting, you can also come across rare creatures, which are indicated with this wolf icon on the map, in other words, legendary foes, which you want to hunt down for even more powerful resources to use for both cooking and crafting, as these actually come with much better stats combined to the regular for Rhines. If you take it down, it will most likely drop fabled loot, as you can see see right here we have a regular tier 2 bug meat with 10% maximum HP while if we look at the fabled one with 15 but plenty more improvements compared to the regular varieties. It's definitely worth investing your time in searching for rare resources because all this can level up your crafting game in general. This instantly takes us to the next thing I wanted to talk about. Don't ruin your crafts, as all the different resources you can come across during your adventures will heavily impact the outcome, how powerful your weapons and armor will be when crafted. You can make tools even more powerful with certain cards like the Combatant's Workshop card. Play this one to craft tools that deal greater damage but offer reduced yield. But to keep things simple for now, be sure to always cycle in between all the possible resources you have to see which bonuses are going to make the crafted item deal as much damage as possible or be exactly how you want it to be based on the playstyle with your character. As you can see right here, I craft two different chest pot rifles, one of them with 450 damage, while the other over 600. So definitely keep your eyes out for all the different resources you can come across, as these can heavily impact the performance of both resources, dishes, weapons, armor and tools. Talking about tools, there are two of them, which are essential. You want to get your hands on as quick as possible. Both the climbing pick and the umbrella, as the umbrella basically serves as protection against harsh weather conditions like rain and even hailstorms, which can literally kill you, while the climbing picks are amazing to scale the rain. Remember the essentials we talked about earlier? The essence traders, which you want to visit to unlock all the different blueprints, well, this is how you can find them by navigating through the menus and locate them to unlock the blueprints. 
very important for pretty much all the crafts in the game unlocked mid and late game. You first also need to unlock augmentations, which are smaller objects which you place around a workbench to unlock the blueprint at the workstation. For the climbing picks, I first had to create a map, which then gave me access to a wide range of new blueprints. So once again, be sure to keep an eye out for all the SS traders out there and revisit the menu if you want to search for specific unlockables. Not only do the resources you come across during your adventures have a heavy impact, let's say, on the performance of the items you craft, but so does the enchantment or upgrade. If you visit an upgrade station, throw in the crafted item with some essence dust of any tier, this can dramatically increase its performance, not only damage-wise, but also efficiency-wise when talking about tools, which is going to make your future adventures so much easier. So what I recommend you to do if you craft a new weapon First, throw it on a workbench to literally double the damage it deals. In addition to that, you can also add infusions to your weapons and armor to further boost their properties. Like if you add an infusion of encumbrance, this can increase the maximum weight you can carry with a backpack or maybe increase the strength or damage you deal with an axe. All this is possible to further customize your build in Nightingale, essentials you don't want to miss out on, as if you don't enchant your gear to the maximum, you're going to miss out on a lot of survivability and efficiency. Anyways, once you are ready for a real challenge, it's time to go treasure hunting and search for vaults, as these places without doubt come with the most rewards or riches you can come across in Nightingale. The first smaller points of interest are Bastilles of Intellect or Agility, where you can solve minor puzzles, which can in return give you small bundles of tier essence, which is required to upgrade your gear and of course unlock new blueprints at the essence traders. But in each world you can also find Fey Towers. These are the bigger points of interest you want to visit at all times, filled with challenges to overcome. The ultimate challenge awaits you at the top of the tower, including some sweet rewards like more essence dust and a synchronous lotus. Once you've completed a Fate Tower challenge, you will also get access to the Realmic Transmuter in this realm, which then allows you to play some minor realm cards and bend the realm's atmosphere to your preferred playstyle. Farm for resources, hunt down animals with all the different realm cards you can create or come across during your adventures. Even more important, the main reason why you want to complete these Fate Tower challenges is because after you've done so, you will also see all the points of interest in the realm when opening up the map, which can make exploration of your world so much easier. Combine this with a Realmic Transmuter, throw in some Realm cards, which can make exploration even easier. You can literally bend the Realm's atmosphere to your will and explore it based on the playstyle you want to apply in this environment. All right, so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Everything I'd say you want to know to get familiar with the essentials of Nightingale. To not just survive, but thrive in this magical world of the face. If you found this video helpful, it would be amazing if you can spare one second of your time. Hit that like button, which not only helps out the channel, but of course also other people searching for a guide like this one. Again, a huge thanks to Inflection Games for making this video possible. A lot more is coming your way, so be sure to subscribe if you want to stay in the loop with future videos. Before we wrap up the video, link to the game can be found in the description. And yes, let us know what you think about it so far in the comments down below. Maybe you even have some questions or suggestions for future videos. I am always happy to help. Ladies and gentlemen, have an awesome day. I'll check you in the next video. Take care. Peace.